everybody, Joe here. I'm back again, and it's once again time for some pickups. So what I buy in the month of June, let's take a look. Alright, just to start off, I know uh, my lighting's not usually up to what I normally do. Uh, I was feeling lazy, it's kind of early in the morning right now and I'm shooting this and just didn't feel like bringing all my equipment upstairs, so that's why it looks the way it does. But I got a lot to show off, it's actually one of my heaviest pickup videos in a while and I'll be explaining why as I go, but I got some cool stuff to show you, let me dig right in. Right off the bat, the uh... People at Retrobit sent me a pair of controllers. This box is empty, but I'm just using it to show off. These are the uh, Retrobit Dual Link NES USB controllers. I did a full review on these. I'll uh, put a card up if you want to check that out. Maybe I'll link it in the description as well. Okay, next up, another uh, great controller that I picked up. Ever since. Uh, Getting the Alienware Alpha, I've been playing a lot of games on Steam and also emulating and stuff like that. And I wanted some decent gaming controllers for the PC. So one thing I picked up, um, actually I went on Wish.com, I'm sure you're familiar with that site. You know, order a lot of stuff direct from China, whatever. And got this for a good like 12, 15 bucks cheaper than what it goes for in uh, US stores. This is the uh, 8 bit do FC30. They make the FC30 and the NES30. The FC30 is the uh, Famicom style. I love the look of the Famicom style maroon and gold color scheme, but then around the sides of it, it has blue LEDs and uh, a gray strip, which kind of throws off the look. So, but all in all, it's an awesome controller. I may actually do a review of this because I like it so much. One last controller, another one I got up for dirt cheap because I bought this one used. Actually, uh, this is a purchase off uh, the Goodwill auction site, and I got this for way cheaper than it normally goes for new. But then again, I didn't get it with any cables or box or anything, and that is a Steam controller. If you've never played with one of these, it is one of the strangest things. You've got little grip buttons, bumpers, triggers. You got your normal action buttons, but then only one analog stick, and then in lieu of a D-pad, you've got this weird like thumb pad on this side, a thumb pad on that side. Actually, this thumb pad might be a little bit more sensitive for some first-person shooters, I don't know. I need to play with this a bit more, that's all I gotta say about that. And, uh, let me get into some other stuff here. I've attempted to do something I hadn't done in a while, and that is do some thrift shop shopping and some flea market hunting. So, I actually turned out okay with some of this stuff. I want to show you first uh, three uh, thrift store finds here. Nothing too super exciting, but I only paid a couple bucks each. I think the most expensive one of these was three bucks. And they are... Uh, Resistance Fall of Man for the PS3. Don't know anything about that, but I just saw it and it was cheap, so I grabbed it. Basically, anytime I see games at this one thrift shop, I'm gonna at least consider grabbing them. Um, because usually nothing's ever more than like three dollars and change. And uh, the Pinball Hall of Fame Gottlieb Collection for the PlayStation 2, and and this one still has a 199 sticker on it. That's Rayman Raving Rabbids. Actually, I think I've seen this one drop in price since visits to the thrift shop because I'm pretty sure this one had a 299 sticker on it one time I saw it, and I was back, and now it has 199. Still haven't taken that off. Now the next thing I'm going to show you. This is kind of a partial thrift store find. I found it at the thrift store, and when I got up to pay for it, I, for, I never checked the inside of it. There was no disc. When I got up to the line, I was like, you know what? Let me, uh, let me take just that case for a buck. And they gave it to me for a buck, which 
It wasn't so bad. Then a little eBay hunting I ended up finding the disc for a fairly reasonable price. It's still significantly cheaper than what the game itself retails for or even eBay pricing on it. So, came up ahead of the game, so let's call this a partial thrift store find. Next up, I'm gonna show you just my usual junk, the stuff that I bought game-wise that wasn't any other hunting in the wild. You know, my normal online crap. And those include a this is a kind of a rare bear. This is probably one of the more valuable things that I have here to show you. That is a copy of Extreme Ghostbusters for the Game Boy Color. This one's kind of rare. Um, keeping with the Ghostbusters theme, I know I've been buying Ghostbusters stuff left and right game-wise. Mainly because I do want to do like eventually like a Ghostbusters themed month of memes and whatnot. And so I'm going to load up on games that are Ghostbusters just to see what I can find, what I can play, and if any of it's worth showing off and playing for you guys, that's what I'm going to do. And here's uh, another one that I've really wanted to get my hands on. I'm actually a big fan of the Atari version. The NES version's kind of junk, and they kind of did their own thing with the Master System version of the original Ghostbusters game. Basically, there was Commodore 64 version made by David Crane. It was programmed by He's like a legend in game, early game making, and other ports were not with his involvement at all, and Sega had the most creative one, usually Activision made all the others, but Sega had a very creative one where they made the game look really neat and actually play fairly well. And then, uh... Here's the uh, modern Xbox One Ghostbusters game. As you can see, I haven't even unwrapped it yet. I've heard not so great things, so if it's a train wreck, that even might be worth talking about, too. And the last thing of non-wild finding, I got myself a, another Game Boy Advance SP. This is the, uh, the Zelda edition. It's a bit rough, but I got a really good deal on it. Now I have three Game Boy Advance SPs. Two of them are special editions, because this one's got that little Triforce on it. And then I've got my classic NES one, which is my favorite still. And then I've got my SP-101. So, yeah. As you already know that I'm nuts about the GBA. Especially the SP models. And last things I'm going to show you. These were all flea market finds. I went to a flea market one. Just not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before. And I... I don't know if you want to say I got really lucky, but I found some cool stuff and didn't pay more than like three bucks here either. Most of this were, most of these were around two. I think for this pile here, I paid 21 bucks. There's actually one more game that was in this pile, but I'm not including it here because it was a double. And that was a copy of Double Dribble for the NES. I turned out I already had it, so I'm not including it here. I'm just showing you the ones that are new to me. But that Double Dribble was actually slightly nicer label than the one I already had, so swapping that out of my shelf. And let's dig into what I got right here. I got a copy of Gorf for the ColecoVision. It's a bit rough labeled, but still. You don't see too many ColecoVisions or ColecoVision games out game hunting. Another, uh, Atari 2600, a game I didn't have, was Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, it's one of those more involved kind of, you know, trying to do a lot with the little games that uh, came out for the Atari 2600. Now, here's the same game on two different formats. I got the PlayStation 2 version, SmackDown vs. Raw 2008, and the PSP version. You know, you, you know how I do my wrestling thing every, uh, April. I don't know what I'm going to do for that yet. I have a lot of ideas though. And let's see, you got a Call of Duty game, Call of Duty Finest Hour. All these uh, disc games that I got at the flea market, they actually turn out to be 100% complete. So that's kind of neat. And uh, yeah, I've. My experience with Call of Duty is extremely limited. I'm not a fan of the series, I don't really care. But for two bucks, not going to complain. 
And then here's something I actually wanted, that's Halo Wars for the Xbox 360. I have all the Halo games on the 360 now, which is kind of neat. And I'm, I might actually play this, because, you know, I'm kind of into strategy games a little bit. And the last one, this is another one, it just caught my eye, because it's not in a traditional, like, jewel case or anything like that. That's Assassin's Creed 3 for the 360 in the uh, Steelbook. And as I said before, complete. You got both discs. I don't know, was this supposed to have an internal flap, or did they both stack on top of each other? I mean, there's enough room for them to stack on top of each other, so that's how I'm holding them in here. But it has... All those games had everything in them, which is really cool. And there you have it. Like I said, this is one of the heavier um, pickups videos I've had in a while. I'm trying to go out and do a little bit more hunting in the wild lately thrift shops and flea markets. In fact, uh, I was just at the flea market the other day and found three things, so that'll be in next month. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye for this time around, and just keep tuned in because I'm going to have some good stuff in the month of July. Not completely sure what yet. I kind of purged, it, starting a clean slate, had a bunch of like partially written videos that I did not like at all, so we're going to start fresh, and that's going to start with the next video, so until next time, hope you've enjoyed the pickups, thank you for watching, take care.